Yeah, that's why we wear the helmet. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dusty Ranch. Uh, just started raining after about two weeks dry. So that's great, we we're really needing some rain around here. Um, so today, we've got another one of these big logs on the mill. And I want to show you kind of an alternative method rather than like on that last big maple log where I was notching out a deep notch. Um, my buddy, the old jarhead on one of the comments said, hey man, there's an easier way to do that. And he said, we call it gun barreling. Never heard it called that before, but it makes sense because you end up hexagoning that log kind of like a gun barrel. So I wanted to show you guys on this log how the gun barreling is achieved. Now, as far as this mill, it's a little more difficult because it is a manual mill. I've got a winch to turn the logs with instead of the hydraulics. Hydraulics make this a lot easier, which is sometimes why I don't do that method as often. Another reason on that maple log, I was trying to get live edge on at least one side. And when you do this gun barreling method that the old jarhead suggested, it takes off all the bark. So if you're doing dimensional lumber, this is awesome. This is an awesome technique, which is why it's gonna work excellent on this big white oak log, because we're making six by sixes out of it. Now, this log is um, about, 29 inches across and this little jut up right here it's like 44 inches 44 inches tall so it's a pretty big log at the butt here um, the other end is just a little bit smaller but not much we've got a little friend hanging out at the mill here with us um, I took some video of him just a minute ago I'll show him to you he's a pretty cool little dude he changes colors he's been around for a while now he's our, uh, our bug eater and I'm thankful to have him if you follow me on Instagram, I, uh, I threw some, some videos of some fire ants that we've got. I wish we had a lot more of the little lizard buddies to uh, take care of some of these fire ants. But let's jump right into this log and hopefully you can learn something, uh, learn something a little different here today. The first step is to cut as much of the top off as possible. Fire her up. So the mill was not gonna clear it, but what happened was the blade made it through the log before it was necessary. Yeah, that's why we wear the helmet. I'll talk a little bit about the helmet in a, uh, another video here shortly. I've, I've been thinking about that. The, uh, the helmet is a lifesaver. So there's that first cut and sometimes you got to get creative with these manual mills because it doesn't have any holes right there where the rails at so scotch it out a little bit it works just fine but that's that first cut taken off of this massive log here something I will mention while I'm doing this um, it's very important and often I forget but it's important for a time-saving location to go ahead and pull that mill head back before you go to rotate these big logs like this otherwise you may end up having to take your blade off or even sometimes taking the log back off in order to get your mill head back to make the next cut now I'll go ahead and leave the clamp there in place in case anything goes sideways and that clamp slips off that big log does not roll into my tire and what we're going to do 
we're gonna take this little triangle out right here. Now what that does is it brings the overall diameter of the log down. Now right here we're looking, this is a small end, so we're looking at 29 inches, even here by 31 inches. So small end on this particular log is still not very small. Now we'll take as much of this as we can out and you can see the hex gun starting to form. Now the question might arise, is this uh, not, not kind of wasteful? Yes and no, uh, there, there is a bit of waste and, and we can look at that. Here, there, and, and right here that came off of this. Uh, but if you were doing the method like I do when I'm trying to when I'm trying to put the live edge, keep the live edge there and do that big chunk out, then you're you're losing something like uh, like this, like this guy right here. The short answer to that question is you're always gonna have waste when you're sawing logs. The goal is to mitigate that waste. So our first slight dilemma has occurred. And this is not a foolproof, never use chainsaw again method this is how do you not burn your shoulders out by cutting a eight inch by eight inch chunk out of a log that's over 28 inches in diameter so i'm going to grab the chainsaw and we'll show you what i've got to do that spot down at the far end of the mill is not going to clear so i'm going to have to cut that little jut out with the chainsaw All right, so it's too far jutted out this way. This is the perfect time to implement something else that the old jar had suggested. Lowering these log stops just a little bit, not so much that the log wants to roll over, but just enough so that the curvature of that log allows it to shift that way just ever so subtly more. Because we only really need about two inches, three inches worth of play right there. So let's see if we can find that. Now you do have to be careful here because you do not want this log to roll over these log stops. It would be near impossible to get off of this tire right here. And you're also in a pretty bad location. All right, so we managed to get her forced on through there. I was afraid she wasn't gonna go for just a moment. Now, this is the important part. Before you start really cranking down on this winch again, you wanna make sure your log dogs, your log stops are all the way back up. Otherwise, I also have my stop in place right here my clamp in place so that it couldn't roll otherwise when you start cranking up on that winch put pressure on these log stops and when this rounded edge starts pushing right here you fold it down and then you have nothing holding it off of that tire right there so make sure 
and you just push them back up, put them in place. Just takes a couple extra moments. What's going on? Around this. That's a disturbing thought. One of my clients pulled in and we ended up shooting the breeze for about 30 minutes, which kicked me back on my schedule. My wife wanted me to be home at 6.30 for dinner, and that means that this project had to extend into a second evening. But don't worry, the conclusion of this video will air November 30th. And you get to see me make some mistakes and maybe you can learn from those. Don't forget, hug your mama, kiss your babies. And until we see you next time, keep it dusty.